So this might seem like a smack in the face to everyone who wants to see my Ant-Man review. Yes, I'm still working on finding a cinema near me that has it. It's harder than it may sound. Anyway, because of my Ant-Man delay, I don't really have a video this week. So I thought, why not just make a 3-in-1 review of movies that a bunch of people have suggested? I don't have the time to make a review for each movie I see, but I thought this might be a fun little thing to do. Just get my thoughts out on three pretty great movies that I've seen. Well, two pretty great movies. I'll probably get to that. Let's go in order of release. First up, Mad Max Fury Road. This came out back in May, and I wouldn't say it underperformed at the box office. It's especially for a rated R film, but it definitely didn't make as much money as it deserved based on its quality. Because this movie is incredible. I might use this word a bit too much, but here it fits perfectly. This movie is jaw-dropping. Since I don't really know where to start with this, let's start with the characters and cast. Tom Hardy. I think the guy's a great actor in general, and he absolutely kills it in this as this very gruff survivor of very few words. In pretty much every scene, he was the biggest badass around. Well, that is, not including Charlize Theron as Furiosa, who might actually have outshined Tom Hardy, and that's saying a lot. She was so interesting and cool, taking charge and going up against against all these insane odds. I would've actually liked to see her character developed a bit more, but oh well, hoping for a sequel. Then there was Nicholas Holt as Nux, one of the war boys. His character showed that all of these guys aren't just flat out insane. They've just been raised in this environment where they've been taught that the one thing they should want is the approval of a Morton Joe and a seat in Valhalla. No, I am awaited. I am awaited in Valhalla! And Morton Joe, the villain, played by the guy who played the villain in the original Mad Max, he was awesome and terrifying. When he stepped into the room, you knew it was going down. There were some other characters as well, but those are the four main ones. Now let's talk about the big thing that everyone knows this movie for. The action. The action, it's perfect. There's no shaky cam, the CGI is used extremely sparingly, and that's why it looks so good. The cinematography is great too. And at first, the fact that a lot of the scenes are sped up took me out of it a bit. When the opening scene did that, I took a step back and was like, I'm not so sure I'm on board with this. But really, it's a stylistic choice and it totally worked with the insane, out of order world. As far as any complaints with the film, well, when the CGI is used, which isn't often, it isn't the best. There's one shot in particular that's completely CGI, and it isn't great. Also, as previously mentioned, the characters are awesome, but they aren't super fleshed out. But really, in the end, these are sort of just nothing complaints. I'm tempted to give Mad Max Fury Road a 10 out of 10, but I do have a few minor complaints, so I'm instead going to give it a 9.9 out of 10. It is my favorite movie of the year so far, my second favorite action movie behind T2, and might become one of my favorite movies of all time the more I think about it. Next up is Inside Out. Pixar is back. Yes, the studio that previously had been shooting out Animation Gold did have a bit of a downswing recently, but now, with Inside Out, they're back to the regular standard of amazing films. This one is directed by Pete Docter, whose other films include Up and Monsters, Inc., two of my favorite animated movies. And now, he's made a third. What was so great about this? Well, let's start with the voice actors. The voice talent behind this film is amazing, and also some of the best casting of the year. Amy Poehler as Joy, Phyllis Smith as Sadness, Bill Hader as Fear, Mindy Kaling as Disgust, and best of all, Louis Black as Anger, who totally stole the show. Riley, if you don't eat your dinner, you're not gonna get any dessert. Wait, did he just say we couldn't have dessert? No dessert? Oh, sure. We'll eat our dinner right after you eat this. Ah! Also, the emotions aren't just completely one-dimensional characters as you might expect. Joy is sad at some points, and fear is angry at some points. Which was cool, although it does lead me to wonder. Do these emotions have little emotions inside their heads? And do those then have emotions in theirs? And so on, forever? I try not to think too hard about that, because it makes my brain hurt. The animation style is also beautiful, and this has one of the best and most unique lessons in a Pixar movie. Which I won't spoil, because it's kind of the point of the whole movie. And also, Pixar is known for those sad moments that make you tear up. Yeah, there are some of those here. Or at least one in particular. The movie is also really funny, although that is something you'd expect for the cast of primarily comedians. The main thing that I love about this is that this movie is just so smart. It is genius. It's just so clever coming up with ways and explanations for the inner workings of your mind. But even if I tried to explain it, I wouldn't do it justice. You have to see it for yourself to really get how smart it is. It explains dreams, imagination, why you just suddenly lose memories, everything. As far as any negatives, there aren't many. At the start when they're explaining how everything works, it was slightly hard to follow along for a few minutes, but after a little bit, I got the hang of it. Also, and I know this is really nitpicky, but I wouldn't consider disgust one of the prime emotions. Joy, sadness, anger, fear, yeah, totally. But disgust? I liked her character, I just wouldn't say she's a main emotion in the real world. So overall, is this the best Pixar movie? Ah, uh, I wouldn't say so. I still like Monsters, Inc., The Incredibles, and Up a bit more. But it's definitely up there. I'll give Inside Out a 9.4 out of 10. And finally, Minions. I'll keep this review a bit brief. Minions is exactly what I expected it to be. And some people are going to really enjoy that, and some people won't. Now personally, I really like Despicable Me. I think it's a really great animated movie. The second one, I thought, wasn't as good 
but it was still enjoyable. And now this, Minions. No offense to the people who really love this movie, it's great if you did, but I would say I would have enjoyed this movie a lot more if I was a few years younger. Because for the most part, this movie is going for the younger demographic. Some jokes aren't at all, like this hot tub scene, among a lot of other adult references, which is something I thought was a bit weird. It's fine for kids' movies to have inappropriate jokes. Pixar does it all the time. But it was just weird here, how it went from falling on your face slapstick to some weird innuendo. I did actually enjoy the movie, in parts. Sandra Bullock is great in the movie, same with Michael Keaton. Movie stealer, though, was totally John Hamm. He was so over the top, I found it funny. The minions also have their moments. For the most part, I was like, alright, they're cute, I guess. The finale of this movie was so crazy and weird that it kind of worked for me. And also, as someone who likes Despicable Me, it was cool to see how it all ties in. Overall, I would say this is a fun way to kill 90 minutes. I wouldn't say go to the theaters to see it, but especially if you like the first two movies. If it's on TV, give it a shot. I'll give it, let's say, a 7 out of 10. So those are my thoughts on Mad Max, Inside Out, and Minions. What do you think of all of these? Let me know down below in the comments. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.